Right behind these doors is one of the most beautifully themed tiki bars in the world, specializing in vintage, modern, mid-century modern, and nautical areas. We're gonna be meeting with the owner and the curator of this place, Mark Sellers. Let's go. Mike. Hey, How Mark. You know, man? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. I have been dying to come into this place. I've heard so much for years about it, yeah. and, um, it's just like the biggest concentration of vintage tiki stuff. Uh, there are a lot of tikis in here, something like 140. There was this big auction that happened in Los Angeles yeah. at La Luz de, de Jesus, uh, the Waco Gallery. And, uh, and I was like, well, you know, this giant collection of vintage tiki stuff that nobody's seen like for years and years. And I had a couple thousand bucks. I was like, maybe I can get like, maybe I can get like one of these. <laughs> Um, and uh, and not, I sh not that not for two thousand <laughs> yeah for, yeah probably not a smaller one maybe. Yeah. yeah maybe maybe that sign maybe the sign yeah. <laughs> but so anyway I go in there with with my two thousand dollars or whatever I had and I go what can I buy and they're like it's all sold and uh, there's a whole yeah. story about you buying the whole collection yeah <laughs> Martin uh, Kate and I were part you know we partnered on this place mm -hmm. and. Um, we had not picked a location yet. We didn't know exactly where Max is. We didn't even know the name at that point, but mm -hmm. we did know we were uh, gonna start a tiki bar and Martin called me and told me about this sale at La Luz and he said, why don't you buy some posts from uh, the Konakai? We can use the railing posts that they used over a water feature. Totally. In the Philadelphia Konakai. Mm -hmm. And they were all for sale. There was like 14 or 16 of them. Mm -hmm. And he said, why don't you buy those and we'll use them when, and when we start this tiki bar. So I called the gallery. Well, first I looked online and saw all the stuff, and I called the gallery and I said, I want everything. Yeah. And um, some people had already bought a few things in the pre-sale, but uh, about 95, at least 95% of what they got. So. And so now it all lives in this incredible tiki bar, and yeah. where are we? We're in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Grand Rapids, of all places, like it seems like such a, like an odd place for such an immersive tiki bar. Or yeah. maybe it's the most appropriate place for, the, for an immersive tiki bar. Well, it's definitely unique here. There's yeah. nothing like it anywhere in the state of Michigan. Uh, really, at that time, not even in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a couple of really good tiki bars that have opened. Right. Uh, but uh, it's, it is a weird place for it. We wanted to actually do it in Southern California. We just couldn't find the right uh, location at the right price. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked in Phoenix, Arizona. We looked in Austin, Texas even Detroit, uh, but finally we just settled on Grand Rapids since I'm already here. Yeah. I know the, the town and this building was available and this building has been the perfect place to do this. Yeah, it's a it's a big building. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I think it's uh, about 13,000 square feet between two levels. There aren't many tiki bars of this size because it's prohibitively and, expensive. Right. <laughs> you gotta have a lot of stuff too to fill it. I mean, yeah. if you wanna do a real tiki bar, you gotta have the tikis. Mm -hmm. and, to have that many, uh, that kind of weeds out a lot of people from from doing it. And did you contract artists also beyond uh, just the collection? I did. Yeah, yeah. The, the lights are all done by Woody Greenwood, Anders Anderson, and uh, James Claycomb. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I contacted them almost a year before we opened to to have them start working on lamps. And uh, a lot of the artwork in here is kind of custom. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it though is not. I bought it directly from artists or on eBay or Etsy. But but even just in here, so there for, first in like what do you call this area? The lobby, the entryway, the entry, yeah. the lobby. It's not a hotel. Yeah. Um, there are these four <clears throat> massive. Looks like from Trader Vic's, right? Yeah, Trader Vic's St. Louis. Yeah, or I guess there's three of them, right? Three are from Trader Vic's St. Louis, and then there's this one. Okay, this is also a Trader Vic's, but I'm not sure which location this is from. Uh, I don't even know if I ever knew that. I. I definitely can't remember where it's from now, but it's definitely a Trader Vic's Marquesan. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, wild style. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, really cool. And then these are Whitco. Which is crazy to me post. because like I have the Whitco bar in the breezeway and I've got a couple little Whitco pieces, but I've never seen like poles this big. Yeah, I know. I didn't even, I wasn't even sure they were Whitco at first, but they are. Yeah. And um, then we got these black apartment complex tiki's. These are from uh, Playa del Rey, California. Mm -hmm. The tiki's apartment complex that is has been remodeled, and there's no tiki's there anymore. Um, I believe that they threw these out, and they were dumpster dived. Really? So they were going to be trashed. And, and they um, show up all over, all over your bar, all yeah. over your restaurant. You call yeah. it your bar or your restaurant? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Whatever you want to call it. It's, you know. Totally. Supper club, whatever. Ooh, I like supper club. <laughs> Um, and you said how many of these things did you have? Uh, I think there were about 60 of them. 
and we used 60. we used about 45 or so inside the restaurant and then the rest um, I just have sitting in storage still so. okay so. jeez um, well I guess where do you want to start well, we started at the beginning. That's good. <laughs> okay. this, this tiki right here is an interesting story. I was in Scottsdale, Arizona mm -hmm. for um, the first tiki oasis and uh, that they did in Arizona. Oh, right. And um, I saw that in an antique store as I was just walking past on the sidewalk. And I went in and asked about it. And the owner said that a soldier brought it, uh, had it shipped home from Asia during World War II. Wow. And um, so it's from Tahiti, I believe. Like the true story of Tiki, where like yeah. GIs would come back and yeah, yeah amazing. Yep. He had it in his house till he died in the 90s, and then that antique store had had it for like 20 years, just sitting there. Nobody bought it. No way. And it was in the window, so I'm like, I want that. Yeah, especially like the shipping costs more than it costs me to <laughs> to buy it. Actually. I would imagine. I bet you it's heavy as hell. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Should we uh, keep moving? Sure. Okay. I'll okay. follow you. Okay. All right, uh, this is our host stand. We've got a Whitco bar as the host stand, mm -hmm. as you can see. Very appropriate. There's yeah. your sign up top. Yeah, now the signage in here is interesting. Um, it's all done by Anthony Carpenter, who just happens, he's a you know pretty well-known tiki artist, but he just happens to live in Grand Rapids, so I've struck up a pretty good friendship with him, and he's done all the uh, signage in here. So like that, he did. Uh -huh. These, you know, the restrooms. We have like 35 different signs that he painted. Employees for only area. Oh, Not cool. just for restrooms. I mean, for everything. Like yeah. exit and stuff like that. People um, that so. own tiki bars don't realize that every detail matters, including things like the right. restroom sign. Yeah, I mean, I looked on Amazon for cool looking signs and there just wasn't anything that was pre-made. So I had to have it custom made. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So and what's the story with the name Max's? I know that Martin's... Um, Name is Max. When right? he was a kid, they called him, his family called him Max. So, so is that the reason for the name? Of, uh, well, that's one reason, but okay. also just it's kind of a cool mid century type name. Totally. Um, just brings up kind of that connotation of adventure mm -hmm. and uh, old school uh, totally. name. And the legend is that every time you come to Max's, Max just left. He's on, on his way to the. <laughs> South Seas for another adventure. And I see. just missed him, but maybe next time you're here. Yeah, maybe he's the most interesting man in the world. Right? I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do we go straight or we go left? Uh, let's go. Okay. Let's go left. Sure. Because this is how customers always come in. You know, this is the main bar right here. Right. Uh, got a, the A-frame, and we got the a lot of stuff on display here. We have about 160 different rums. Holy and, smokes. And, um, and I got a lot of artifacts in that uh, chicken wire cage over there. I learned long ago that as a bar owner, you can't have stuff that's not secured or it'll walk away. So yeah. That's why we have it behind the cage. Yeah, just an incredible collection of small stuff. Yep. I had drinks last night with you, and the drinks here are, you couldn't ask for anything more. Right. Garnished beautifully. Like everything felt balanced. The bartender, I, what, Aaron? Yeah. Aaron, Aaron was super like personable and like certainly knew her craft. Yeah. And like was passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, she's been here since we opened, so four and a half years now. Or yeah. four, four years. Okay. So. Yeah, she she was a delight. Yeah, got a lot of, got some shag, some Wendy Savola, Tiki Sai. A lot of shag stuff here. Here's a yeah. homage to the Kahiki. That's their final closing party that they did in 2000. When we go down to the the bathroom area, the amount of shag, like giant yeah. shag prints is shocking. Yeah, it's like a shag art gallery <laughs> like as shag. you walk down to the bathroom. Totally. Yeah. Okay. I think we have um, about 60 shags in here. 60 shags? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And has, has Josh been here? Uh, Josh has not been here. Really? No, I, no. I love the guy. I would love to have him come in. I know. Him, we got to get him out here. Yeah. It's and a hike for the California people. I understand it's kind of a destination. There's not a whole lot else that you would come here for for tiki right, right in Grand Rapids. But uh, but I'll tell you, you know, people travel across the country to go to the Mai Kai, right? And, and I don't think this is far off from that. I, yeah. You know, not quite as big, but yeah, and definitely doesn't have the 60 years of history that they do. But well, seven, but but you kind of do in like a lot of the carvings, like right, a lot of the artifacts. Right yeah, there. totally. Yeah. So there is a lot of historical value to visiting this place. 
<laughs> so these green Chinese tiles have an interesting story. They're from um, a mansion in <clears throat> uh, Shanghai that was torn down in the 40s. Wow. And a couple in Florida had um, a chain of Chinese restaurants and they had 3,000 of these tiles shipped over from China. Mm -hmm. They planned to put them in their Chinese restaurants and then they never did. They just kept them in boxes and storage for wow. like 40 years. Wow. And then the... So they're new old, new old stock, really. Yeah, they're old, they're old school. I mean, you can see yeah. on the edge that they were kind of ripped out of a some place. You know, they're not. Oh, okay. It's not like they were made just to put in here. Yeah, totally. But, um, the the old Chinese man in his seventies had an affair with one of his servers, and the wife divorced him and took the Chinese tiles and sold them to an antique dealer in Florida, and then the antique dealer sold them to this woman that I got them from. So yeah, well, that is um, that is certainly a lesson. <laughs> Yeah. Don't, don't have an affair, you'll lose all your Chinese around. jade tiles. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's keep going here. Got a little, little guest up here overlooking the main bar. The creature up there. Yeah, the creature. Uh-huh. And so the interesting thing to me is that, that this is very traditional, but you're not afraid of like throwing little touches like that in. Of course, yeah. that was like a mid-century thing too. Yeah, it's yeah. just fun. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Totally. It's not tiki. Martin didn't like it. He said, no, I don't want to do that, but I just did it anyway. <laughs> Take that, Martin. <laughs> tiki is done by, this coup is done by uh, Tiki Ray. Okay. In Phoenix. Yep. Area. Buddy of mine. Yeah. And we got uh, some Bosco poles lining these, what we call the Tiki huts. Mm -hmm. And it's all kind of lounge seating. People generally call them lounges, but I call them the Tiki huts. Right. And uh, just I love that idea of segmented off uh, little dining spaces. Yeah, people feel like VIPs when they're in these areas. Yeah. Yeah. More Bosco stuff in here, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of Bosco stuff. I love his. his yeah, he's style. great. And then this room, you told me something special about these walls, these, these yellow panels. Yeah, yellow so tiles. I, I've never seen anywhere else yellow Chinese tiles, but those are from an old Trader Vic's. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the. Um, the Philadelphia Trader Vicks. Okay. And, um, and then I put those little statuettes in there, in yeah. the blank spaces, so those weren't originally there. Totally. But And then the, these panels here are from Oceanic Arts. Leroy made them. Okay. And they were used as props in uh, movies and TV for years, and they rented them. They never sold those, and then I convinced uh, Leroy and Bob to sell them to me. Yeah, amazing. These um, tiki's here that separate this lounge from the next one, we're all done by Patrick Souza, who lives in San Diego. Okay. And Beautiful I bought, work. <laughs> I bought like 10 from him, so yeah. it was just a perfect way to separate the two lounges. Yeah, totally. And, it, you know, I was saying this last night. I was like, one of those tikis in most restaurants would be like the the one that they're really proud of. <laughs> and they're, they're just used as like wall separators here. Yeah. It, you have so many. Have I, you counted the tikis in this place? Uh, I think there's 160. 160? Roughly, yeah. Like big tiki's? Yeah, like tiki's like, like this size. You don't count like this guy? No, okay. no, no, no. If yeah. you counted those, it'd be like 500 or something. But Jeez. I, I went kind of hog wild on eBay when I knew that I was opening this place. I bought a lot of little stuff on eBay and Etsy just to kind of fill out the, the small spaces. That sounds like the most fun eBay it was shopping fun. spree you could. <laughs> what about uh, this guy in the corner here? Uh, that is from the Hawaiian hut, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a Maori, obviously. It's beautiful. I love it. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. I like the age on it. Yeah, I got that in the in the Jordan Rycheck La Luz sale. Oh, okay. And then more of these lamps yeah, from uh, I Woody? Think, or... I think that's Woody. Yeah. That one. Incredible lamp maker. Yep. Okay. And a great guy, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got a Kim Bang mm -hmm. uh, piece right there. Carmen Bosco. Miranda. Yep. yep. A Bosco, and that's a Leroy yep. Schmaltz piece. Leroy's stuff is unmistakable. Yep. And another great lamp. Check that out. Yeah, there's a lot of OA stuff in here. Here's another Le Leroy. Mm -hmm. Got some Disney stuff. Disney stuff, shag, and looks like Doug Horn there yep. with his Devo cat. Yep. <laughs> and um, what is this guy? I, you know what? <laughs> that is my employee's. Having fun. I really don't even know what. <laughs> I, I forgot who, they even put that. Thing. Who let you in here? <laughs> <laughs> That's not tiki. Right. But well, I don't know. Yeah. It's fun. Um, this this whole wall is really shocking. A cool story. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because um, Gecko had 30 of these. So Gecko carved all these. Right, from Hawaii. And, yeah, and, from Honolulu. And he uh, he's also part owner of this restaurant. Is he so, really? Yeah, he's a minority owner. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. And um, so the Ward Warehouse was a community center in Honolulu that a lot of families um, had, you know, brought their kids for classes, dance classes and things like that. And it was kind of a community staple and it got torn down and Gecko was able to salvage um, some of the beams that were oh, up in the rafters. No and way. So they're not railroad ties. They kind of look like they are, but they're beams from this Ward warehouse. And he carved them into tiki's. And um, I said, well, I think I can use those somewhere. So why don't you make me 30? Mm-hmm. We didn't measure them. And I didn't know where I was going to use them in here at all. At the right. time that I ordered them, I just figured I'd use them somewhere. Uh-huh. So when they arrived, we laid them out next to each other and they fit like within two inches on this wall. It was like, <laughs> it was like I planned it all along. <laughs> but I shouldn't admit that I didn't. It no. was pure luck. Yeah, <laughs> you, should, you should be saying it was a planned thing. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Luck. And that tall red one at the end didn't arrive with the rest of them. It got lost on, in shipping. It's oh, okay. the biggest one of all, and it didn't even arrive. And I, I saw the pictures of of Gecko loading uh, these, these things onto the truck, and that was on, loaded onto the truck. I mm-hmm. know that. But then it didn't arrive. So apparently it was lost in the warehouse in Long Beach, California, and uh-huh. they found it after a couple of weeks and Whew. shipped it to me. So. That's and then it looks like a Tiki Tony up there, right? Those are Bosco. Oh, those are so Bosco. Or not. It does look oh. kind of like, it, I could totally see Tiki Tony doing something yeah. like that. Yeah, but... it's kind of his version of the Whitco planner, the hanging right. planner. Yeah. yeah. And then there's this gigantic, um, uh, what would you call them, like a coup? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Yep. It's uh, done by a guy in the Detroit area that does fountains and water features for churches and community centers and government building. He had never done anything remotely tiki before. Mm -hmm. And I sent him pictures of um, tiki images that I thought would be appropriate. And he, he nailed it. Yeah, he really nailed it. And we were talking last night how that could go so badly. That could go really wrong (laughs) with somebody that doesn't know tiki. Yeah. Uh, and he didn't show it to me. He wanted to surprise me because he was so proud of it. Uh (laughs) It just showed up one day. And I hadn't seen pictures or in progress work or anything. Yeah. Thank, thank the gods. <laughs> it, it works. Yeah. Know? I mean, I knew the dimensions would be right because we gave them like very specific dimensions. But in terms of the look of it, uh-huh. I got lucky with with that one. But especially know? commissioning something like that and not seeing progress photos. I know. That's terrible. I was kind of distracted when I was opening this place. Just so busy getting everything set up that I kept forgetting to check in on his progress. So. Totally. Okay. Got a Bill Collins here. Okay. Really cool PNG mask. Uh-huh. Another Bill Collins. I got a bunch of Bill Collins in here. I love his stuff. Here's another Bill Collins. Right yeah, he there. does a really nice traditional style. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And he's a great guy, too. I've met him. I visited his workshop in, um, in Kauai okay. a few years ago. This is a Vic Heads mm-hmm. Tiki. Great carver. Yeah. Just worked <coughs> on the Royal Hawaiian in Laguna Beach. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a Vic Heads, too. Right there. Okay. And then um, this is area we call the platform area because it's raised up a few steps from the main floor. Uh huh. And um, so we, we have four booths that hold 10 people each. Okay. And um, each one has a different artist theme. So this is Muki Sato, the Japanese artist. Right. So all the artwork in here is Muki Sato. And then all the artwork in here is Doug Horn. Mm-hmm. And then this one is kind of PNG. Okay. It's not really a specific artist. It's PNG stuff. It's like the Inferno Room booth. Yeah, kind of, yeah, that's a good good way to to name it. Um, and this is the Shag booth. Uh huh. Amazing. And I love the idea of the. I think you know, just like we saw the other room, like segmented dining areas. I think it's like fun for people, you know. Yeah. Yep. You're not just sitting in a, a an open restaurant. A lot of groups love to come here because it feels semi private. Yeah. Yeah, totally. These posts are all from the Konakai. Um, Kansas City that burned down, and you can see some burn marks on some of them, but they were no salvaged. Way. I got them from a collector in Kansas City. There's just so much stuff that that you like, you lose <laughs> how like how interesting individual pieces are. Yeah, it's just like I would kill for this one post in my house. <laughs> yeah, this collector had like eight of them, so I bought bought them. Yeah, this is my tiki mug collection. At least the ones that would fit in here. I got more at home, but these are like my favorite tiki mugs of my collection. There's about 500 in here. Uh huh. So this is, everybody always asks that question like, how do I display my tiki mugs? Yeah. So the answer is, 
You open a gigantic tiki bar restaurant <laughs> in the middle of the country. And you pay someone to make a custom cabinet for you. <laughs> that's, right, that's right. Based on dimensions. I gave them the, because I measured a bunch of my tiki mugs just to see what the range of sizes mm -hmm. was, because I wanted to be able to fit as many as possible, but I didn't want the, the shelves to be too small. So I, I gave them dimensions and it came out really well. Right. We should mention also that the floors were just clean last night. Yes, and that's why the floors like... are not sticky, but my <laughs> shoes stick, they, they make the sound every time I take a step. Yeah, we don't want to give people the impression that this is a, a sticky bar. <laughs> yeah, we got Crazy Al. Uh-huh, his there. sea serpent guy. Yeah, these are all geckos, these red ones. This is a custom commission one that I got a set of 30 uh -huh. mugs from him. He likes the number 30, I guess, because I also have 30 of his, those Ward Warehouse posts. Oh, okay. But he does things in 30s. <laughs> in 30s. What a weird <laughs> denomination. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I could name most of the art, but I think a lot of your viewers probably know. Yeah, I think so. These, these mugs. All right. So uh, there is another lounge, right? There is. There's so another part of the first floor, and then we'll go up to the second floor. So, so far we've seen mostly like vintage style with some modern stuff with like yeah. modern artists but this room is totally different yeah it's almost all vintage although there's some ken pleasant stuff which i'll point out so as you enter the room there's two big tiki's from um oh. a place called the <laughs> yeah you're gonna have uh there's two big tiki's uh from a place called the harris imperial luau in okay. pompano beach florida that is long ago uh out of business but Wow. It was in a hotel, and they had 14 of these uh -huh. tiki's in the restaurant. Amazing. And I've got three of them. There's another one inside this room. Um, where, are the, where are the 11? Of their 11? You know, I don't know how many survived. Mm -hmm. There's at least one more for sale right now. The guy keeps trying to sell it to me. Oh. But I'm not. I, I'm stocked up on tiki. So <laughs> I think I'm not, you're. I'm not buying anymore. If yeah. anybody out there wants to sell me anything, sorry, I just. I'm done. I think you're <laughs> probably good. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, so yeah, it's just a cool. This is in the book of tiki. This, um, these, the Harris Imperial Luau was featured on page twenty-five or twenty-six of the book of tiki. Okay. So if you open that up, you'll you'll see what it looked like. And this is the Atomic Lounge. Yes, and we modeled this look after the Harris Imperial Luau photo in the book of tiki. It's not exactly the same. The layout's different. And it's a lot smaller than that place, but uh, this room kind of has that vibe, mid-century, with the rock walls and Whitco everywhere. Mm-hmm. And some Ken Pleasant stuff. Like, oh yeah, this stuff. Uh, which stuff? This stuff so, up here. Well, actually, you know what? I think it's hard to tell what's Whitco and what's Ken. I don't know if that's Ken or Whitco. And then this is definitely Ken Pleasant. Okay. Here. Yeah, he's a great, great skull, uh, great carver. Yeah. His uh, his wife's father is William Westenhaven, the yeah. founder of was, Whitco. Was I think was his yeah. wife's. Grandfather. <clears throat> oh, that's so correct. So he's the grandfather-in-law or grandson-in-law. Right. And you got but, the Whitco I got the, World. Yeah, I got the Whitco World map from Tiki Tony actually. Okay. He had an extra one, so I, I <laughs> bought it from him. He has two. He I wish two. I had an extra Wor Whitco World map. <laughs> <laughs> but I love like the the shape of the cabinets or the the shape of your back bar here. It's very dynamic. Yeah, I found a picture <clears throat> of a bar in Singapore that had a similar back bar, and I gave that to my bar designer and just said, make it something like that. And so Amazing. it's a lot of, you know, like, uh, was it Frank Sinatra or somebody said, good artists borrow, great artists steal. Right. There's a lot of stuff borrowed from other places. I think that was Picasso. Okay, yeah. yeah. I heard it was Paul McCartney too, so <laughs> we we'll have, to, we'll have to do a deep dive on the But then I heard, I heard that like probably your, your most valuable piece of art in this whole building isn't tiki at all. Well, it's, it's tiki. Well, it, yeah, I mean. It's one of three Mark Ryden tiki uh, paintings that he did. This is a print, not the original, uh, but it's an, it's my favorite yeah. piece of art, like uh, modern art that we have in here. Incredible. Very cool. Okay, so where are we going next? Uh, why don't we go to the second floor? Okay. Let's There's yeah. a pole covered in tapa. Yeah. That was that was Ben. He didn't want the pole <laughs> to be showing, so <laughs> it's an interesting solution. We used a ton of tap tapa cloth in this restaurant. I mean, oh, I'd imagine I was so. buying it for years on eBay, just trying to accumulate enough for a big tiki place. Right, and uh, we used it all. Wild. Okay, so this is the what the basement? This, well, this is the stairs down to the basement, which is where the bathrooms are, and it's basically a shag art gallery. Mm-hmm. 
I love the wallpaper too. Yeah, that's Michael. Uh, oh yeah, Mellencrod is his name, or from the Michael and Allen duo with their home tiki bar. Okay. Right in uh, in L.A. Yeah, he's in L.A. Mm -hmm. and he had stuff on um, a website that could be turned into wallpaper, so. spoon flower or something like that. Yeah, spoon flower. That's yeah. what it was. Yep. He's got all kinds of great prints and, and yep. patterns and stuff. People don't usually pay a whole lot of attention to like the bathroom area. Yeah, no. Once you go in the bathroom, there's no tiki stuff in there because I don't want anybody, <coughs> you know, dam yeah, damaging or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. but in the hallways, you, this is a Susanna Mosher though. Wow, that's Susanna. Yeah, and um, I, I licensed the digital image so that we could blow it up on plexiglass and light it from behind. So. Oh, that's how you're doing yeah. it. Yeah, and she's been here. Susanna's been here, so she saw it. Okay. She was here last year. I'm good buddies with Susanna. She's, she's awesome. Yeah, yeah, she's great. What a beautiful piece of work, or piece of art. There's so much depth too with the um, the lighting. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, I just really like the image, so. And don't, don't you have a cocktail just like that? We do. What's, what's the cocktail on the menu that's? I don't know. <laughs> but I've seen that many times. <laughs> I've seen that, totally. I'm, I'm sure our bartenders would know. Yeah. So. <laughs> More shag stuff. There's even another one over here. Uh-huh. Yeah, these are all prints that I got from, um, there's a guy in Southern California that has like hundreds of different prints. He's a shag dealer. Right. And I got, got most of them from that guy. Amazing. None of them are originals. I can't, couldn't afford the originals, but <laughs> they're limited edition prints. So. Yeah, well, I don't, think, I don't think many people have this many shag pieces yeah. in their collection. And I just love his stuff. I do too, and also a great guy. Yep. Okay, let's go back upstairs. All right. So the stairwell here. The stairwell is really, uh, it's got a lot of interesting stories. Mm -hmm. um, so these are both Rydens as well. These are the other two Mark Ryden Tiki paintings that he did. Right, and this was on the cover of a an Exotica record, I believe? Yeah. Yeah? yeah that one was. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't know if this, was this one also? I, I believe it was a compilation or something, yeah. Don Tiki, or I, yeah, I don't know. And there's a shag, one of my favorite shags here. Uh -huh. But the real story of the stairwell is this giant frigate bird. The bird. That was outside, it was above the entrance to the Konakai Philadelphia mm -hmm. for about 25, 28 years until it was torn down. And uh, they actually trashed that and a lot of other stuff and a guy, bribed the construction foreman a hundred bucks to let him grab all the artifacts. A hundred bucks? Yeah, well, he, yeah, they were gonna throw it away. <laughs> yeah, that's and wild. Luckily, there was a collector, even in the early 80s, somebody was collecting and um, saved a lot of stuff, including this bird. I always find it so perplexing that anybody who was dismantling a tiki bar in the, the 70s or 80s, would even like think to throw that stuff away. I know, like, isn't that crazy? Yeah. But at that time, it was just seen as junk. But. Like, ugly artwork or something, But it's you know? still not junk. It's like, obviously somebody carved it, you know what I mean? Yeah, but there was no eBay back then. There was no way to look up what stuff was worth. Um, it was just decorations for a weird old restaurant. Yeah, that was Ugh. close, so. That kills me. But luckily, yeah, I got a bunch of this stuff because Jordan Reichek bought uh, a lot of that Konakai Philadelphia stuff from that collector, mm -hmm. and then I bought it from Jordan, so. Yeah, and you told me like a, a pretty special story about a lady who um, who used to go to that place, right? Yeah, yeah, we had a woman that, from Philadelphia come in uh, a couple years ago, and she started crying when she saw that because her father used to take her to the Konakai Philadelphia when she was a little girl. Uh -huh. And her, her father had passed away, and just to see that mm -hmm. brought back a lot of memories. It was that's really nice. It was pretty cool. Yeah, the power of tiki. Yeah. Here's a a custom painting that I had done of that bird by the Boozy Doodler in Texas. Uh huh. Do you know who that? <laughs> no, I, d I don't. Yeah, the Boozy Doodler. Yeah, he did uh, some velvet paintings for me, but. This. You should it, uh, you should put up a photo of this thing like in its natural habitat. You mean outside the Kona Kai? Yeah. Yes, I should. Yeah, right like here. A, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Just like a little reference to go, hey, yeah. by the way. 
That's a great idea. Yeah. That'd be rad. I got a photo of it. So. Yeah. Cool. I don't mean to help you no, continue to design this place. All, any suggestions <laughs> you have are very welcome. Uh, we got some PNG panels, house panels uh -huh. there just to cover the matting. Love those. And then a uh, bunch of tiki's, a mix of uh, vintage and modern tiki's. Got a um, Trader Vic's Osaka right here. Oh, okay. And this is Vic Heads. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is Patrick Souza. This is Dave Hansen. This is another Dave Hansen. Lake Surfer. <clears throat> yep, this is uh, Vic Heads. Mm -hmm. I think this is Patrick Souza. OB Tiki is what he calls himself. Oh yeah, San Diego. Yep. Yep. Vic Heads, mm -hmm. Trader Ricks. Yep. Scott uh, Eskridge. Okay. You know oh yeah, yeah, I know him. Yeah. Yep. He did this one. And again, here's that bird. And then another giant wall full of these apartment building yeah. carvings. Yeah, we were. I had so many of them, we were trying to figure out any place we could use them in here but possible. Like they're just kind of all over the place in here. Yeah, they're so rad. So cool. More tap of print. And then this is where we get into like the nautical area, right? Yes, the only problem is hmm. the fish tank isn't on right now. Oh, okay. I don't know how to turn it on. <laughs> Me neither. So the second floor was all designed by Notch Gonzalez, who's yeah. from Northern California. And um, the first floor was Bamboo Ben and me, and mm -hmm. the second floor was Notch. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Notch is an incredible, like very traditional tiki bar designer. Right, you'd yeah. say. Yeah. He just did the Royal Hawaiian yeah. uh, in Laguna Beach. Totally. But yeah, he, he was here for about six weeks, six, eight weeks. Mm -hmm before we opened and he wanted to do a kind of a nautical warehouse theme mm -hmm. up here. So that's that's the theme up here. I love that style. And all this stuff looks vintage, like the, the you know, the crates and everything, but they're not, it's all modern stuff that he just distressed to make look look like it was vintage. But yeah, you told me, um, you told me one of the secrets of his like distressing. Yeah, he was hitting them with chains, <laughs> blow torching them, you know. Yeah, <laughs> super cool. Uh, and also cutting them in the kind of jagged edges like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you want it to look like it's it's been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He's a master of that kind of thing, like a movie set would be. You know, totally. Like, he could probably design movie sets. And it takes some real restraint for to do a room like this when you're doing a tiki bar, you know, not to yeah. to be able to resist the idea of like filling up the walls with nothing but but tiki's through here. Yeah. And um, I had a lot of map. Uh, I, lo I love old maps. Yeah. And so he's like, let's let's use all the maps in here. Yeah, very cool. We call this room the captain's quarters. Very cool. And the ceiling is kind of disguised by this uh, fishnet. Yeah. It's a harpoon. So here's the main, the bar, the upstairs bar. We mm -hmm. call it the boat bar because it's shaped like a boat. It does look like a boat. And this is you know, a masthead here. Uh huh. I love those. Yeah. Up here with people's names on them. Those are people that have completed our Tiki passport. So they've had uh, all 35 drinks on our menu and they get a stamp every time they order a new drink. And then uh -huh. when you complete the passport, you get your name up here and you get to have 40, 40 letters of whatever you want to say on your plaque. So, so, so I leave tomorrow, right? You, yep. know, you flew me out here to, yep. to do this and do a live show tonight. Um, do you think I can get through the menu tonight? I, I don't want to be the one that has to drive you home. If <laughs> you drink 35 cocktails, you're a better man than I am. <laughs> Yeah, we I'll did have somebody do it all in one sitting, but they didn't drink them. They bought thirty-five and gave them away to customers. But does that count? Well, we gave them a, we gave them a password. That counts. Mm, okay. If you want to buy thirty-five cocktails for other people and spend three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, yeah. So well, he he bought you, his. You get plaque. your passport stamped. Yeah. It's, okay. It's one of our servers' fathers. You know? Oh, okay. Our well, opening weekend, he bought thirty-five cocktails. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I think he drank one of them himself. Yeah. Okay, so then it uh, looks like we have more popping in. Lots Guinea. of PNG stuff. I, I uh, went hog wild for a while on collecting PNG stuff. So mm -hmm. I wanted to use as much as possible and notch. And it's not cheap notch stuff. Too. No, it's authentic stuff. Yeah. I mean, I got it from um, a dealer. Most of it I got it from a dealer in Australia who specializes in PNG stuff. Right. 
But I mean, it's not inexpensive either. It's like, no. <laughs> there's, it's there's a lot of that here. Yeah. yeah. And then we have this little diorama. We had this weird corner that like a table wouldn't fit right in. And uh -huh. uh, it was just this, there was no you know, wall here, but it was just a weird corner. So we couldn't put table there. We didn't know what to do. And then Notch decided we could do like a museum diorama. Huh. So um, it's a lot of PNG stuff in here. And then there's a Milan Guanco. Milan Guanco. Milan, yeah. Milan Guanco. <laughs> A tongue twister. Tiki, yeah. Uh huh. Which is one of my favorite tiki's in the whole restaurant. I, I just love that. Yeah, he had such a great style. Yep. And also like a Papua New Guinea drum. Lots of PNG stuff. Shield. Yeah. What's this panel right here? That's from the Konakai, Philadelphia. Wow. Amazing. Here's another one from Konakai, Philly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hopefully it's not too dark. Let me show you over on this side because we have some interesting stuff over here. And this place was absolutely like hopping last night. A lot of people hanging out at the bar. Yeah, yeah, we we are quite busy on weekends and even during the week sometimes. So That's amazing. We're doing we're doing well now. After you know we made it through the pandemic, that was a really rough year and a half. Yeah, it's a testament that if you want to do a tiki bar super traditional, you want to like spend the money to like do it right. Uh, it works. Yeah, if you read our reviews online, like a significant percentage of our customers get it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like they, they, they comment on the design, the atmosphere. Uh, some people get it more than others. Right. But um, there's, we also do have customers come in and don't even notice that there's anything different than any other bar. I, we had one review that said it's just a normal bar. There's nothing special about it. Like, there's nothing, okay. there's well, nothing special about it. All right, this. man. Go to the sports bar across the street. <laughs> yeah, that's, totally. That's more your street. We talked about that last night, too, that there are no TVs in here. No TVs. I love that so much. Yeah. That was uh, Martin Kate was very strict about yeah. that. I kind of wanted to put TVs with videos on them of like surfing and sure. uh, old maybe old <laughs> monster movies or something, but he didn't want to do any TVs at all. So. Yeah. So we didn't. I love that, and I think that uh, I think Sven said that that the decor is your entertainment, and, yeah, or something like that. He had like a, a nice um, quote about the decor is your entertainment, the music is your soundtrack, or I, yeah. I don't know. I'll yeah, he, he came to our opening, so he's been here. Um, these these tiki poles here are from different Trader Vic's locations. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure which one that. Which Trader Vic's that's from, but this is from Detroit. Trader uh -huh. Vic's Detroit. Dude, I think somebody whacked off his. <laughs> yeah, his that used thing. to. Well, not us, but that used to happen back in the day. It was probably like offensive yeah. or something. Yeah, you know. Whacked off his wiener. Nobody whacked this one off. <laughs> <laughs> whacked it off. Maybe that's oh. a bad way to describe it. <laughs> it's probably a bad way to describe <laughs> it. Here's uh, Trader Vic's Chicago, the uh -huh. Palmer House Hotel. Gorgeous. This is. Uh, well, I'm not sure which Trader Vicks these two poles are from. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, another Os <clears throat> Trader Vicks Osaka back here. Okay. This area back here, um, we, we, you know, sometimes a, a large group of 20 wants to sit together. We put them back here. Wow. We call it Notch's Nook. <laughs> That's cool. There it is. There's the sign right there for Notch's Nook. Okay. Oh, that's another Anthony Carpenter sign. Very cool. What a beautiful space, man! You must be uh, you must be proud of what you've built. I'm pretty I'm proud of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy just hanging out here. Like, you and, know, I never get bored with it. And you said that how many bars have you owned? Twenty two, <laughs> over over the years. Right now, I only 22. own one. <laughs> you only own one now. Yeah, that's yeah, just this one. So this is I kept the best. Certainly something to be proud of. And even like the the lamps in here are orchids of Hawaii. I have one of those in the breezeway. And somebody gave it to me, and I was like, oh, I don't know. It kind of looks like I think I, we have three. Yeah, we have yeah, three. Yeah, you have them in yeah. each one. I, I didn't really know what it was when my buddy gave it to me. Sure. And I'm very happy that I didn't, I didn't get rid of that. Yeah. 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 And the fish tank is 500 gallons. Uh -huh. uh, the lights are off right now, and I can't turn them on until a little bit later in the day. Mm -hmm. The fish like to like their quiet time. Oh, I see. Without the lights on. Mm -hmm. It was made by a place in uh, Southern California that oh, okay. does custom. Art, artsy kind of artisan coral, and it's got all sorts of vibrant colors. And there's tiki statues that like embedded are in there. embedded in it. Yeah. That I, because um, I, I shipped some I, some stuff I had bought from Big Ed, mm -hmm. who passed away recently. He was a great guy. Yeah, he was a great guy. Um, but anyway, so he some of the a lot of the tiki's in there are from Big Ed. Cool. And then tonight we're gonna do a, a breezeway live. Yeah. So we have like how many guests are coming? 
50, about 50. 50 people. Live and studio audience. Live studio audience, we're gonna be talking to no, Aaron. Are we gonna have a laugh track? We should have a laugh track, like Ooh. they did in the old, old school days. You know? <laughs> We'll no, see. We're not going to do that. Let's not do that. Um, but we're going to be talking to one of one of your, I think your your best bartenders, Aaron. We're going to be making a cocktail. So keep an eye out for that episode coming soon. So is all that right. it? Is that the show? You've seen it all, Mark. It's just like I just get when I walked in here, I got chills. Like I was, you get this. If you're really passionate about this stuff, it's like. I don't know, it's like emotional to see somebody doing it the way that it's supposed to be done. Even the music was like exotica and surf and some rockabilly and um, which you, you kind of have to add in some kind of modern music to keep it lively because otherwise if it's nothing but exotica, it's like people- Yeah, the like, exotica gets a little sleepy after a long, so we, we mix it sleepy. in, right? Yeah. We don't have any modern like pop music or anything like no, that. No, no, no. But uh, so almost all our music is, is from the, uh, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, but yeah. we even have some garage rock on there. Uh-huh. And some uh, some hula girls. And some hula girls, that's right. <laughs> cool, well thank you so much for joining us um, and, and having us here uh, at Max's. Like, right. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, totally. Folks, go to, what's your Instagram? Uh, just Max's Tiki. Go to Max's Tiki, give them a follow. If you've enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and if you don't hit that subscribe button, you're in big trouble. You heard it. So we just ended, but then I saw this guy as we were walking out. What yeah. about this dude? So this is done by a guy named uh, Dustin Darrow, uh -huh. who lives in Ventura, California. And he and Big Ed road tripped it all the way across the country in a, <laughs> with a trailer put behind their car, yeah, all the way from California, and showed up here with this and a couple other tiki's and then big ed brought a bunch of stuff that he wanted to sell me and i i was an easy mark yeah like i ended up buying like 20 <laughs> things from him <laughs> he knew what he was doing so what you're in the fish tank yeah totally but uh but yeah so uh, that's dustin darrow this these two here are by a guy in france and oh as far as i know france's only tiki carver his name is frederick frederick bramond wildly elaborate yeah like really beautiful pieces and those are kind of um it, those are custom. I told them I wanted Maori right. figures, and I sent them some pictures of Maori carvings that I really liked. What is going on right here? Is he eating a, a? Yeah, he's eating some. He's eating a little dude. Yeah. <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay. Right. Oh, you know. Also, I you know I wanted to point this out too. This um this covering, I guess like little hut covering here. I've never seen that kind of treatment with these bamboo poles across. That's a notch thing. Yeah, really just great work. He's so good at the details. Yeah, he's obsessive about the details. In fact, that's why he was here for six weeks working mm -hmm. on this because he just, he went very slowly and methodically and um, it was worth every penny that I paid him though. He did a great job. So. With Tiki, the details all matter. Yeah, they really do. I, you know, I have one more question for you, and I think there's like this trope: uh, a tiki bar is never finished. Yeah. Is your is your bar finished? Let's just say I'm not buying anything new yeah. for the bar, but I still have a lot of extra stuff in storage. So yeah, I, I'm constantly thinking about where you know, like there's a space up there I could put something. Uh huh. And we were just looking at this right space here. right here. I know. I was like, Mark, I think we so, have, I think we have a little more room. There, there is some room. <laughs> right. Not much though. I mean, there's really not much room left in here. And that happens to me in the breezeway all the time too. I'm, I'm like, the, the breezeway is full, but. You know, you can always, always build another. Something. Yeah, yeah, you can always build another little like half wall or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, this is our merch cabinet, and it's got mugs that we made. Mm -hmm. that we make. We have a ceramic studio, and uh, <laughs> got a. I'm sorry for laughing, but uh, you just said that you have a ceramic studio. Yeah, we because it's so difficult, and you know, it takes so long to get mugs from the big tiki mug makers nowadays. Yeah, they're backlogged, and there's a huge demand. So Martin and I just came up with this idea. Let's just start our own. <laughs> <laughs> mug studio, then we'll be able to get mugs whenever we want. And yeah. it was very difficult to start because I don't know how to make mugs, like the technical details of it. I know a lot about tiki mugs, but not the mechanics of how to make them. Mm -hmm. But turns out there's a lot of people that do know how to do that. So I just hired a few of them. And then I had to be involved in the design because they didn't know tiki. Right. They just knew ceramics. Sure. And so with me kind of overseeing the design aspect and them doing all the important work, mm -hmm. um, 
they were able to create mugs. So these are some of your mugs that you offer? Do you offer these yeah. online or are these? Uh, yes, some, sometimes. Okay. Yeah, we do. Um, but they, it's when we put them online, they tend to sell out almost immediately. And yeah. then we don't have any for the restaurant. So sometimes we only sell some editions of our mugs in the restaurant. Okay. Just so we have stock here. Yeah, right. And we have, we're very low on stock right now, as you can see. Uh-huh. And then one other thing, I, we, we've tried to end this like three times now. <laughs> and uh, one other thing is your menu. So you sell your menu, which is a, a nice yep. uh, offering, but your menu is done in a very traditional style of like yeah. illustrated cocktails. And I would imagine that having the drinks illustrated really helped sell them. I think so. I mean, Mar um, Anthony did that, Anthony Carpenter. Okay. Um, he did all the illustrations. We had to show him pictures of what the cocktail would be served, you know, what this. The, the would look like, and right. then he, he drew them. And here we have the Smuggler's Cove book, which mm -hmm. is Martin's book. Totally. So if you want to buy one of those when you're here, you can. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got a whole library of them. Oh. One of the most invaluable, like, tiki reference books, really, more yeah. than just a cocktail book. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Got the whole history of tiki in there. So. And go. Okay, so this um, tiki here was carved by a guy named Guy Wilson. Right. Uh, in 1975, I believe. I've seen a picture um, that somebody posted on Facebook of him actually carving this. No way. So, um, but I got that from Jordan Reichuk. And um, the same guy, Guy Wilson, carved that one up there, which is made out of redwood. Okay. Guy lives in northern, uh, the northern Pacific. I think he lives in the state of Washington. And um, so he got redwood for that. Right. And... There's Bill Collins there. This is another Tiki Ray. Uh huh. <laughs> I think we've covered all of the Tiki's now. Most of them. There's probably, <laughs> probably a few we haven't, like this one here. That's oh, yeah. Tiki Ray also. Wow. Very cool. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we're done. <laughs> My stomach's growling. So yeah. 